All right, we have more changes unfolding in the U.S. economy and the U.S. bond market. Changes that have bond traders doing a complete 180 following the release of August jobs data on Friday. What we just saw, folks, what we just saw was slippage in the employment data. Real movement, what the Federal Reserve's been looking for, waiting to see for over a year. Well, it just happened, and it's important as it's the quickest way to solve most of these market imbalances, including for the housing market. And following this unemployment shock, our favorite analyst over at B of A Global Research, their chief investment strategist actually, wrote in his Friday note what we should all expect to see next, what we should expect to see in the September FOMC meeting that's coming up. And if you're an investor, what you should be preparing and readying to do as we enter Q4. But before we get started, if you're not already a subscriber of this channel, consider subscribing. It helps the channel out. And I appreciate your support. So, so the bond market just went haywire, folks. Big money moving hard into short-dated treasuries. And this is why it's critical as an investor. What you learn quickly when you begin investing is to watch the flows. Where the big money is moving never lies. And it helps you paint a picture for what's really happening. And what's about to happen right now in the coming week, something that we've all been waiting a while for, the possible end to this monetary cycle. We're going to look at the report in a minute because it's very good this week. Hartnett's weekly notes are fire, the only ones that I personally look forward to. But first, let's be clear what just happened. The unemployment rate just spiked, not by a little, but by a lot. And if you've been watching our videos, you've heard us talk about higher for longer, how the Fed will continue their tightening campaign until they see the unemployment rate break upward. It's what they've been waiting for and is what they are ultra sensitive toward. We've heard Jerome Powell himself talk about wanting to see the unemployment rate normalize, get closer to 4%, but that's extremely easier said than done. I spoke about this on Twitter yesterday morning as once it starts to break upward, it can quickly get out of control. Not a far stretch to say outright breaking the labor market is a real possibility. And once that happens, if that happens, much harder to fix. Two very different things, completely different things. Slowing it down versus speeding it back up. Remember, that's what gave us QE in the first place, quantitative easing, which is why the Fed is uber sensitive to any change in the unemployment rate and why we've been talking about it jumping for months. We just spoke about it last video, in fact, how it will happen, how it has to happen eventually. Best guess for when was at the end of 2023, late Q4, as all signs, all the data is showing corporations struggling. They've been struggling for months, but it's starting to bubble over. We're not referring, by the way, to mega caps here, okay? If you're waiting to see these giant companies like Apple, NVIDIA, Google start conducting mass layoffs, you'll be waiting a lifetime because they're fine. They're going to continue to be fine. But the real meat and potatoes of this economy, the small and mid-sized businesses, small cap public companies as well, are six feet under gasping for air and are getting close to the end of their ropes. We showed this in detail last video and to expand on it on what the Fed's thinking after last week, take a look at this. What you see here is the real rate, the real interest rate, the rate that actually matters, the difference between the overnight rate and the inflation rate, putting us right around a 2% real yield, actually over 2%, 2.3% to be precise. And if you look closely, what do you notice? What do you notice happens every single time they invert like this? Look back to 06. An economic squeeze takes place, causing a recession. This right here is what we currently look like. 14-year high, which means normal businesses, normal investors, real estate investors, Airbnb investors, everyone and anyone is being squeezed right now, struggling. And the Fed believes that this is restrictive enough. Jerome Powell just said as much in his Jackson Hole speech, that they believe we are sufficiently restrictive right now. Take a listen to what he said. Restrictive monetary policy has tightened financial conditions, supporting the expectation of below-trend growth. Since last year's symposium, the two-year real yield is up about 250 basis points, and longer-term real yields are higher as well by nearly 150 basis points. Beyond changes in interest rates, bank lending standards have tightened and loan growth has slowed sharply. Such a tightening of broad financial conditions typically contributes to a slowing in the growth of economic activity and there is evidence of that in this cycle as well. Total hours worked has been flat over the past six months, and the average work week
has declined to the lower end of its pre-pandemic range, reflecting a gradual normalization in labor market conditions. And he is right, folks. A 2% real yield always leads to a hard landing. 3%, forget about it. And it turns out Michael Arnett agrees. Look what he wrote in his Friday note. This was published August 31st. He writes, the biggest picture, 10-year treasury on course for third consecutive year-over-year loss, something that has never occurred in 250-year history of U.S. Republic. All right, this is interesting. Also, not what I was going to read, but take a look at this real quick. We'll get to the important part of the note in a minute. He writes this, never in the history of the U.S. Republic have U.S. Treasury returns fallen three years straight in a row. Now, you've heard us talk about this for months now, how long-dated fixed assets are very cheap, been cheap and getting cheaper as demand for treasuries, for mortgage-backed securities have just fallen off a cliff. Hartnett writes this, this reflects a staggering 40% jump in U.S. nominal GDP growth plus inflation since the 2020 lows. He goes on and writes, 40% surge in U.S. nominal GDP past three years on the back of a $13 trillion government stimulus surpassed only two other times in history, in the 1949 to 1952 era and 1975 to 1979 era. He writes, stocks love booms. In that same period, just like today, the S&P 500 rose 136% between 49 to 52, 97% between 75 to 78, and just like now, 113% since the March 2020 lows. But there's a big difference, he says. In prior two nominal booms, booms, value outperformed growth stocks by 45 percentage points and 105 percentage points. This time, it's the complete reverse these past three years. Value underperformed growth stocks by negative 27 percentage points. And you can see what he's talking about right here. The the three-year U.S. GDP growth greater than 40 percent only happened two other times since the 1940s. All right, so he's talking about growth plus inflation. You can see from the 2020 low to today, nominal GDP is up 40 percent, something that's not sustainable in the slightest. Remember, the only reason this even happened was due to all the stimulus that the government pumped out over the last few years. Right now, we have the opposite transpiring. We have QT, quantitative tightening, which, by the way, we've never done in the history of the Federal Reserve. They are vacuuming up all those extra dollars that they juiced out over the past few years. All right, let's get back to what we were talking about, though, the important part of this note. Take a listen to this. He writes... The price is right. U.S. jobs market softer. The job openings to unemployed ratio now at its lowest level since September 2021. This equals strong tell that the Fed is done. And let's take a look at this. What you see here is the job openings to unemployed ratio peaking equals clear sign the Fed is done. The dark blue line is the Fed funds rate. The light blue line is the U.S. job openings to unemployed ratio. What do you notice when you look at this? Besides the fact that this labor market's incredibly strong, been strong, all due, by the way, to the reopening following the pandemic. But what else? Whenever the light blue line begins to fall, the Fed begins their pivot. Back during the run-up to the 08 meltdown, unemployment starts rising. The Fed immediately begins cutting. Same thing in 2020. Cut rates right down to zero, folks. And if you look further back, you'll see the same thing. Now, the real question is... Is all of this enough for the Fed to call it quits? Well, if the labor market continues breaking upward like we just saw last week, then yes, it is. The Fed would be done. They have to be. If these August numbers, though, were an anomaly or they hang out around this 3.8% level, which I doubt is going to happen because there's this like big lag effect with all this stuff. Higher rates get piped through the entire economy, but it takes longer for it to reach and affect different sectors, right, and different cohorts of people. What is likely to happen now is the next two FOMC meetings, they're probably going to have a good excuse to hold tight, to pause, waiting to see what comes with the labor market. The next FOMC meeting happens in a couple of weeks, I think, September 19th, September 20th, something like that. Then another meeting six weeks later. But look, folks, one thing is for sure, sell the last rate hike. As every tightening campaign in history has seen a massive sell-off unfold following the Fed's final hike. And going into Q4 is a time to be ultra-conservative, folks. Moving to a money market account is a smart play right now because you want to be liquid 
once the sell-off arrives. And remember, money market accounts are still paying risk-free 5% yields. No penalty to pull your money if the, you know, if the need arises, like in the case of a big sell-off. All right, if you enjoyed this video, got something out of it, press the like button. If you didn't, that's all right too. Press the dislike button. Either way, I appreciate you watching.